All right, let's keep this simple. This video is all about sweet <clears throat> fragrances. I don't need my glasses. We're talking about sweet fragrances for the cold weather, that's fall or winter. Men or women can wear these fragrances. We have a mix of designer and some more niche slash luxury. So hopefully there's a little bit of something for everyone. Let's dive right into it. There's gonna be links down below for all of these fragrances in case you're interested in checking anything out. The first one up here is at number 10 because it's brand new to me. I literally just sprayed it for the first time. Probably like 30 minutes ago. And it really surprised me. And this is from a brand I've been hearing more and more about. I was sent two bottles by a friend of mine who works peripherally with the brand. And one of them I'll be talking about later, but this one, I'm probably gonna butcher this name. This is called Brocelian, is it French? I don't know, I don't know what it means, but it's a lovely sweet fragrance, mainly based on caramel, maybe a little bit of cinnamon, maybe some vanilla in there, but there are some deeper, richer notes like some resin, some spices, and even maybe a little bit of an animalic touch that makes it interesting. But it starts off when you spray it very citrusy and very kind of caramel sweet almost like a dessert. If you smell something like Zerzhoff Lyra, the opening will remind you of that, but as it dries down, it becomes its own thing. Pretty complex and it changes quite a bit. I wanna get this opening. I have the dry down here on my hand. Have yet to give it a full wearing, so again, I'm reporting back, that's why it's number 10. And this fragrance, as well as the other one I've tried, are very potent, so you don't need much of it. I cannot wait to give this some wear and tell you more about it, but for now, do check out a sample of Brocéliande. I'm gonna have links to whatever I have down below. Number nine is number nine because it is also new to my collection. I actually just filmed an unboxing video when I first smelled this, I gave you my first impression. You can check out that video here. That was an unboxing from Max Aroma, and this fragrance is from a brand called Vertus which I'd heard about on Instagram quite a bit, and this is called Vanilla Oud. This bottle, I have to say, is much more impressive in person than it looks on camera. When you look at this thing, you look at the angles, you look at the details, all the nuances that make it a different style of bottle. I love this thing. And this is yet another fragrance I'm still getting to know. It is kind of what it sounds like. There is vanilla, there is oud, there's more going on than that. But when I spray this, the first thing I'm reminded of is basically kind of like a burnt vanilla with a warmth, with an ambery warmth to it, like burning vanilla, definitely a medicinal woody oud in there, definitely this warm kind of brashness, but overall very smooth, leaning Middle Eastern in that vibe, very, very elegant smelling. I put it on my skin the other night and it was behaving a little bit light, not disappearing quickly, but definitely sitting close to the skin. So this might be a little bit more of an intimate fragrance. At least it was for me. Your experience may differ. Again, performance is not only dictated by the scent, it's also dictated by you. Keep that in mind. That is Vanilla Oud from Veritus, beautifully sweet for the cold weather. At number eight, this is a fragrance I don't even need to spray because it is so strong. It's almost too strong for me. That's why it's kind of low down the list here. I like the scent profile. It is technically a clone. You'd be surprised to see a clone on a list, but I had to include it because I love the original and this comes so close that I might just put the original here if I had it. This is coming from Blend Oud. They call it Oud Sapphire, and this is a clone of Maison Francis Kirk John Oud Satin Mood. It smells just like it. Very, very close. You would be hard pressed to tell the difference, especially in the air. Very intensely sweet, rich, rose and oud, kind of vanilla-like in a way, very creamy, very intense, very dense, very strong. It will fill up a room. It will fill up a room if you're not careful. I wouldn't spray this more than twice. That's just me for myself. I don't personally love fragrances that are this strong, but I love the profile and I love the type of sweetness that it brings, and it will be perfect for those really cold nights, especially if you're gonna be outside, it will be detected, trust me. That is Oud Sapphire. Here at number seven, this fragrance is also just a little bit too strong for me, which is why it's down on the list in this way, but I do 
like this profile a little bit more than the previous one. And this is coming from Uniki Luxury. This is called Crush On Me. This is an interesting mix, but it comes off relatively simple to me. Caramel, lots of caramel with a splash of a fresh lime and a lot of earthy patchouli. There is more going on than just that, but that's mostly what I get. It is very rich. It is quite sweet. Something that's gonna smell amazing in the air. That's where I think sweetness shines. That's where it gets attention. When you smell something sweet in the air, you wanna know what the heck it is and where it's coming from. Smelling this up close is gonna be a bit much, but in the air, it's very, very nice. I have given this maybe one or two full wearings, just two sprays, and smelling it around me, I was really enjoying it, but it is very intense, I'm warning you. Get a sample first, Uniki Luxury Crush On Me. Up next, at number six, the cheapest fragrance on this list, one I've been talking about for years now, I love this stuff, I don't know why, it's kind of a guilty pleasure. There's nothing special about it, but it resonates with me in some way I can't explain. This is Euphoria Intense by Calvin Klein. Again, very, very cheap, very easy to get in a lot of different places. I will have links down below, as I said. This is kind of a mix of all the classic likable elements in a men's kind of fall style fragrance. It is still a bit aromatic. It is still sweet. It's just that mix of fresh, sweet, maybe a little spicy all at the same time. You get ginger, you do have some amber in there. There's an ambery sweet warmth, which is the primary that I get. Mixed with a little bit of oud that I couldn't say it smells like oud, but there is a nice woody grounding to it. So it has some legs, but it is primarily a playful scent. I would not dress this up. I would wear this out at night casually when I want to have that playful, maybe borderline alluring vibe. Very, very likable stuff. Very easy to wear and beautifully sweet for guys who want to smell sweet. Euphoria Intense from Calvin Klein. Into the top five. I could have chosen a few from this collection, but I decided to choose this one because I've talked about it the least out of some others in the collection. I'm trying to bring you guys some freshness and not talk about all the same fragrances all the time, which I feel like I've been doing kind of lately. But we're talking about Lo Medial Extreme from Guerlain. Takes that, or, ooh. This thing hits me every time. Takes the original DNA and flankerizes it. That is my own word, trademark. Flankerizes it in a way that I believe a flanker should be. And this goes for this entire collection. Takes that DNA, bitter, sweet, creamy almond with this almost syrupy cherry with leather and woods and spices and it replaces those elements, some of those elements with different constituents that still fill those roles. So instead of a cherry-like fruitiness, we have more of a plum fruitiness. We have tobacco in here, which plays a bit of an earthy role, maybe more so than leather wood, but you still have that bitter almond. You still have some woods in here. It is still very warm. It is still quite sweet. Maybe not the sweetest. The Eau de Parfum is a little sweeter, but again, I've been talking about that one a lot. This is a lovely fragrance if you can find it. It's not that easy to find. I will link down below to some decants if I can find them. Check out Lone Medial Extreme. This is the latest flanker in the collection. I'm really looking forward to seeing what's next because this one grew on me. I didn't love it at first, but it's grown on me more and more. Check it out. Here at number four, I've been talking about this since it came out a couple years ago, maybe three years ago at this point, something like that. Really enjoy it. Grace loves it when I wear it and she also wears it herself. Perfectly unisex. Definitely it was inspired by a very popular fragrance called Baccarat Rouge 540. This is Mancera's take on that DNA. They call it Instant Crush. This is cotton candy, sweet, creamy, rich, spicy, alluring, and potent. So strong. Just a couple sprays, I'm getting 15 plus hours. I don't really keep track, but I know I will smell it tomorrow. Maybe more for the confident guy, if you are a guy, because a lot of guys might consider it a little feminine, but I do think it's perfectly unisex. Dress it up, don't spray too much, you'll be surprised. That's all I'm gonna say, instant crush. Number three, relatively new to my collection, but I've been loving the full wearings I'm getting out of this. I did recently talk about this in another video about rainy day fragrances. 
something of that nature. And this is the first time I talked about it was in that video. This is Lark. That's the brand. That's not the fragrance. The fragrance is called Argentium Halo de Lune. Oh my gosh. Not the sweetest, I would say. It is sweet, unmistakably, but sweet may not be the most prominent component here. I would call it more of a woody fragrance and maybe even more amber wood. I think amber wood is an ingredient in the base, giving it this warm, sweet woodiness that's all kind of congealed together. But sweetness is prevalent here. It reminds me of a fragrance that I love called Boyce 1920 Dolce Di Giorno. Not the pizza, but this is a slightly different twist, especially as it starts to dry. This is a very handsome type of sweetness, not overbearing, not tooth decaying, but definitely, again, when it hangs in the air, it will get you noticed. Again, sweetness is very powerful and very good at that. Lark Argentium. Check this out from Fragrapedia House. I'm going to have the link down below and we have a discount code Lux2022, something like that. You'll be able to save some money on any purchase, including samples from their website. Check it out. At number two from Nishane. I could have chosen Ani, which is a lovely fragrance and would have fit perfectly here, but trying to mix it up. I've talked about this one less and this one is talked about less in general. You guys have already seen Ani. You know, it's great if you've tried it. This is Nefs. Nefs is a special scent because it is one of the most unique fragrances I've smelled in a long time. And I can easily say that about most of Nishane's fragrances. They are different, totally different, very unique, very complex. This takes an interesting mix of like this almost apricot like sweetness, like a stone fruit, juicy, rich, sweet, maybe with some fig. And it covers it in like honey and whiskey, maybe some vanilla and maybe oud. There's a lot going on here. It smells so luxurious. I would dress this up at night dressed up. Why am I making this a song? You have to smell Nefs. Get you a sample. Do not blind buy it. It is very expensive. But when you smell it, you'll know why it's so expensive because it smells expensive. Unlike anything else out there, I cannot speak more highly of it. Do check out Nefs. And number one is kind of an old favorite of mine. Been talking about it since its release a couple years ago, and it has only gotten better and better at least my bottle since I've had it because it's had time to just sit and just enrich itself and just become more full bodied, kind of like a good wine. This is coming from Argos. This is probably their best seller these days. And this is called Triumph of Bacchus. A lot of you have tried it and love it. A lot of you have tried it and maybe you don't love it. Again, your experience is yours alone, but I can say I easily love this stuff. This is sweet, rich tobacco. You have a lot of peach, you have a lot of apple and rum, and this fragrance has only gotten boozier as it's sat. It actually was almost clear or like a light yellow when I got it. And naturally over time, as it has sat in the dark, it has matured into this beautiful, rich rust orange kind of ambery color. It smells incredible. Don't spray it on your white shirt though. You will regret it. It bears a little bit of resemblance to something like red tobacco from Ansara as well as maybe Carlisle from Par From The Marley, but I prefer this to all of those. It is smoother, it smells more elegant, more luxurious, it smells more expensive, whereas the other two I mentioned are a little bit more brash and rough around the edges. This stuff just sits on the skin so beautifully. Moderately strong for me, it's gonna last all day, all night, even though it may not project like crazy. I don't need it to because a fragrance profile like this that's too strong just becomes obnoxious. You don't want to be obnoxious. You're going to smell it. Don't worry about it. But like I said, performance will vary. Your mileage will always vary. Triumph of Bacchus is a mainstay for the brand and for my channel. Do check out all of Argos's fragrances using the code FRESH10 to save you 10% on any purchase. Get a discovery set. You'll probably find at least one, if not nine fragrances that you love. That's Triumph of Bacchus. All right, those are some sweet fragrances that I would recommend for the upcoming cool season or the current cool season, wherever you are in the world. I wanna know, have you tried any of these? How do you feel about them? Let me know down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Make sure you subscribe, join the Fresh Squad. It's free. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace, I'll see you in the next one.